The Federal Land Consolidation and Rehabilitation Authority, or FELCRA, has retracted its interest to buy into Kuantan Fla Mills. This comes two days after a BUSA filing by KFM stating that FELCRA had expressed an interest in taking up a stake in the company, which would have eventually allowed FELCRA to lease through a reverse takeover offer. According to FELCRA, the decision came after an urgent deliberation which resulted in an immediate retraction of its register of interest and ceasing of all exploratory pursuits in KFM. KFM's shares subsequently spiked more than six times when the news broke to close at 25 cents yesterday. The counter has since been suspended and is due to resume trading tomorrow. With Velcro's interest in the can, KFM says it will continue in its efforts to explore other opportunities with other parties to restructure and revitalize the company. The company is listed as PM17 due to poor financial performance. According to PM Najib, the government has managed to save 2 billion ringgit from the final bill for the first phase of the MRG project through various cost saving measures. According to reports, the total for Phase 1 came in at 21 billion ringgit, well under the targeted 23 billion. Najib stressed that the project had never experienced any delays and that the target date had never once changed. He adds that about half of the total contract value was awarded to Bumi Putra companies, exceeding the original 43% target. The first phase of the Sungai Bulo Kajang MRT line is set to begin operations tomorrow, with the second phase spanning Samantan to Kajang due to be operational in July next year. Tanaga National is aiming to be recognised as one of the world's top 10 utilities as a national power provider focuses on renewable energy and global expansion. Chief Asman Mohammad says it intends to invest domestically in solar, wind, biomass, biogas and mini hydro projects. Tanaga is currently off taking close to 5,780 RE projects in Peninsula Malaysia. Asman says that it is also aggressively expanding into markets in Southeast Asia, South Asia and the Middle East. The utility giant is also targeting for international investments to account for 20% of its earnings by 2025. Moving forward, Tanaga's chairman Leo Mogi says the board remains confident of its prospects and believes the strategic plan it has in place will support the group's future growth trajectory. Top Glove Corp saw its first quarter net profit fall by 42.9% as it felt the full brunt of the natural gas tariff hike and increase in minimum wage. Net profit came in at 73.3 million ringgit compared to 128.3 million last year. Revenue also softened by 1.8% to 785.6 million ringgit from 800.3 million ringgit in 2016. Executive Chairman Lim Wee Chai notes that Bank Nagar's recently announced directive that requires exporters to convert 75% of their process into ringgit creates unproductive administrative work and hopes that the government will allow exporters to keep at least 50% of their profits in foreign currencies. Going forward, Top Glove remains optimistic in its outlook with a growth projection of between 6 and 8% per annum. Lim says the glove maker will keep looking for areas in which it can do better in order to deliver a strong performance. The International Monetary Fund is expecting Malaysia's real gross domestic product to increase to around 4.5% in 2017 versus an estimated 4.2% this year, stating that the Malaysian economy still continues to do well despite significant headwinds. IMF says that Malaysia's diversified economy, along with exchange rate flexibility, has buffered the real economy from commodity price shocks, while deep financial markets have helped absorb global financial market volatility. As for 2017, IMF says private consumption growth should remain strong, supported by labour market strength and fiscal measures. But alongside the external risks, sustained low commodity prices add to the challenges of fiscal consolidation.